and this is Racist. <laughs> I'm Bobby. And I'm Dylan. And this is Sly Cooper. Yeah, I read you. Arguably my favorite game of all time. This is the first game? Yes, this is the first one. Made by Sucker Punch Productions. But they are too busy to make any new ones, so they left it up to Sanzaru, and now they're working on Infamous. Oh, they finished it. I can't wait for Infamous Second Son. I really enjoy the Infamous games. Oh, this is a fun little thing you can do. You see their heads? Yeah. <laughs> yes! Yes, I want food! No, you do not get food! I am so crazy for food! I went to the store to buy some pickles. I like ah. This is ah man. This is such a nostalgia. Ah, this is this is game. This is this is a game right here. All right. So what what are the names? Uh, it's Sly and then Bentley. Sly's the coo Sly's the raccoon. Bentley's the turtle and Murray's the hippo. Oh Murray, perfect name for a fucking pink hippo. Yep. And uh, Carmelita is the fox. Inspector Carmelita Montoya Fox. Her oh name God. changes. Oh, not her damn. name. Her voice changes in every fucking game. Is that like the love interest? Yes. It's like that forbidding kind of romance because she's a cop and he's a thief. Yeah, she you sounds get like it. she sounds like a bitch. Her voice changes like literally every game. Like this game, she's very like American, so she's like, "Oh, I am the inspector" or whatever. And then like in the second game, her name game, is Carmelita. What? How is she American? In the second game, it's like still it's a different voice actor. Then the third game, they're like, "All right, she's uh she's Spanish." Yeah, she is, isn't she? Oh. I remember I and it's you. and she has like this kind of heavy accent and then in the recent one the fourth one which I just uh, played that came out a couple months ago she has like an extremely heavy Spanish accent like it's not even a joke so. um yeah and so like do you think if they ever make a fifth one it would just be like just completely and she just talks in Spanish it's just Spanish it's just like hey, 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 <laughs> It's basically whenever you see those blue sparkles, uh, he can do something. It's basically the, the gist of the entire game. I'm just taking a water sip break right there. So basically, you're a thief, but yet you're on the good side. Yeah, pretty much. Uh, this game is actually very different from all the other Sly Cooper games. Like, after they made this one, they never made one that was like this one. Well, what's, what makes this one different? Well, for starters, in the other three games, you have a health bar. So, like, basically, you can get hit, like, you can get hit points on you, and, like, like basically any other kind of modernish game. Yeah. This game, you have one hit point, so just don't get hit by an enemy. But also, the enemies have one hit point, so it's, it balances out. And then you can get these things that are horseshoes that attach to your red backpack, and that counts as an extra hit point. Alright. And I think if you get two. It turns gold and that's two extra hit points. It's basically like uh, Crash Bandicoot and the, whatchamacallit, the Tiki Masks. I forgot what his name is. Uka Uka? Aku Aku? Something like that. Me and Jerry were talking about Teen Titans yesterday. Yeah. Good fucking show. So I don't know if you can hear her voice because we have the audio lower down, but like, listen closely. You think? This pistol packs a paralyzing punch. You see how she's very American? Yeah, I hear. I think that's an Asian woman. <laughs> a lot, a lot I, of voice actors are Asian. I saw the, uh, the behind the scenes video for the making of the second one. I don't know if it's the same voice actor for one and two. But if it is, she's Asian. Why did I do that? Oh man, I remember. So you want to know what's interesting about this game? This was the first PS2 game I ever got. Really? Really. And well, let me clarify on that. I was in Florida for Christmas. And I was kind of bummed out because we weren't home for Christmas. And, like, we didn't have a Christmas tree because we were in a hotel room. So I thought, ah, oh, man, that's my first day. So I thought I wasn't going to get any presents. So, like, I woke up Christmas morning. No, it was, like, Christmas Eve. And we were leaving Christmas morning. And my mom was like, we're going to give you your presents this month, like, today. So, like, she gives me the presents. And they, I'm not going to say they sucked because a present is a present. And, like, kids don't, some unfortunate kids don't have presents out there. But it was like a fucking light bright cube and silly putty. <laughs> so, that you that would make some kid very happy. Yeah. But I was a finicky kid. Um, I know what you mean. So like that's what they got me. And I was just like really like I was secretly bummed out, but I wasn't gonna say anything because that was just the kind of awesome kid I was. So um, yeah. So we went to a party that night at my uncle's house in Florida, 
-huh. And fucking, I was in the room playing Star Fox 64 with my cousin. Mm-hmm, awesome game, yeah. And we heard, like, a kathunk on the roof, and fucking Santa Claus came through the backyard <laughs> and started giving all the kids presents. And, like, everybody got these sick-ass presents. Like, some kid got, like, a fucking... Like, this one girl got this fucking huge dollhouse and shit. It was awesome. And, like... I'm not saying I wanted a dollhouse, but... I think... Dollhouse, yeah. I think me. But everybody's got really cool presents. Um, and then, like, he got everybody's present, and then he's like, Alright, I'm back off to the North Pole. And I'm just like, oh, I didn't get anything. And then, like, he starts to leave, and he's like, wait, my sack is still heavy. That's an opening for that's a seashell joke. But he's like, my sack is still heavy. There's one more present in here. And I'm like, what? And then, like, the next thing you know, he just pulls out a fucking PS2, and he's like, this is for Bobby. Is there a Bobby here? And I'm like, I'm fucking Bobby! Yes! And it came with Jack and Daxter. You see, so I remember like hooking it up into my hotel room like TV like the second we got back and, and I was afraid of like some enemy in Jack and Daxter so I had never played Jack and Daxter and the next day I saw the commercial for this game and my mom and my mom was going to Walmart with my aunt and I was like do me a favor when you're at Walmart give me this game and she got it for me and I've been playing Sly Cooper games ever since. Imagine if you did that like in your adult voice when you were like six and you were just like hello mom I may offer you a freaking predicament I'm having I want this game of Sly Cooper in my hand. I would like to offer you you an offer <laughs> okay so these are the fiendish five i'll explain these guys even though he, this guy is about to explain them five evil dudes come kill sly's parents sly's an orphan and they steal this book full of all their, their master secrets and shit and that's little sly and he's like oh fuck no my parents are dead yeah it's sad and shit and like this guy okay he has an interesting story and i'm gonna spoil it right now yeah. I intend to play the other like Sly Cooper game sometime in the future. Definitely not soon since we're playing this one already. Mm -hmm. Go on. But that guy's storyline is actually really cool. So basically, the Sly Cooper family line dates back to ancient Egypt with like the first ancestor whose name is like Slight in Common or whatever. And uh, but so does Clockwork, the evil bird. And his thing is he's always wanted to wipe out the race because they've always been better thieves than him. Yeah. Jealousy. So he basically made a mechanical version of him to like support his body on, and he's been living for hundreds upon thousands of years <laughs> as this mechanical body that is fueled on hatred. <laughs> it's fucking awesome. And I'm not saying we kill him in this game. <laughs> How much drugs was Sucker Punch on? When they made this, they were on drugs the second they named their company Sucker Punch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, all right, we're gonna make we're gonna make this game where you're a robot on wheels. So this is what I loved about this game. Oh, don't fuck around with that game. We're playing that game too. Just to f you know what? Just because you fucking said that, we're playing that game. Okay, let's go. <laughs> so what I loved about this game is there's five worlds, but if like you can go to this world, but if you go one world to the right, Murray's always there doing something. <laughs> so like now he's eating peanuts, and if you press X. You know, for using peanuts. There's ones where he's like playing video games, like playing ping pong and shit. But right now we are going to go to Tide of Terror. That's right, I remember these world names. Does he ever give you the peanuts? You don't actually eat the peanuts. The oh, that's the fucking time bullshit. Like he offers you the peanuts, but Sly's like, I love peanuts. I'm too fucking cool for peanuts. That's Sir Raleigh, he's a frog. Don't steal my peanuts. As a young man, don't steal <laughs> hot tip of frog my dad of his life is a chef. Privilege. He's been a, like a, sh a culinary expert On a whim, since I was like two. To a bit of and he went to this school to like learn. And apparently he had like this Asian teacher Raleigh, with a very heavy accent that was trying to teach was them about how to how to make different peanut-based food items. But every time he'd talk, he'd be like, so when you take the peanuts, you want to put them in the pan and fry the peanuts. And if you want, you could even use peanut oil to uh, make penis. Was off the soggy coast of the Isle of Rat, a small island. A <laughs> That's an actual story. I cannot. I would not be able to go to school if that guy fucking was seeking yeah, teaching definitely. me. Yeah, definitely. Man, you don't understand how different this. Like, playing this game and then playing like two and up, it's so different. Like these graphics are different. Yeah. And people have been getting, like, giving a lot of hate because, like, the new Sly is, like, really different from the old Sly. But I really got used to it. So. Yeah, it was, like, cell shaded and, like, So you might notice, death. you might notice those three icons that were at the bottom of the screen. It was, I don't know if they load here, but it was, like, a blue key, a yellow vault, and a red timer, or, like, vice versa. Every level has a blue key. You need the blue key to beat the boss, so you need to get all the blue keys. And every level has a vault. And there's bottles pretty much everywhere. So if you can break all the bottles in a level, it gives you a special code and you can find the vault in the level and it'll give you a power. 
So it's basically like a. The, the, is that the main collectible? Yes. Yes, that's basically. So breaking. Bottles. So like, like if we were talking about this in like terms of like Banjo Kazooie or something like that. Yeah. Instead of the jiggies are keys which you need to unlock, and then like the bottles will be something like Jinjo, I guess. Oh yeah. Something like that. They're definitely not. I mean, I mean, I mean they're not the same thing considering they're two completely different games. But you know. The same logistics. Collectibles. You yeah. Know. Okay. Great. So like these are bottles. I think he actually stops to talk to you about them. Or he just tells you have to break down. Yeah, I see. So there's 20 bottles in this level. They're not that hidden. I mean, like there's a couple levels. Like there's always like one bottle that you'll never think of. Like there's a bottle on top of this mask. Like if you're to take your Binakicom, whatever button it is. I don't think I can open it while this guy's talking. There we go. You can see that there's two up there. Mm -hmm. And to get it, you just have to break the bottom of the mask. That's like the only secret one in this level when you just break the bottom. Well, I mean, it's the first level, right? Yeah. So they're not going to make everything like, you know, it's under the ship and then you have to do like a 800 a code. 360 no scope and then put in the Konami code. Yeah, you don't have to do that. Yeah, no, none of that. Um, The bottles make a return in slide 2, slide 4, they're not in slide 3. Well, what's the collectible in slide 3 then? I don't think there is a collectible in Sly 3, actually. Sly 3 is very just uh, adventure-based. You just kind of have to do the story. All right. If I remember correctly. So it's like these, this game is more of a platformer than the other ones? or? Uh, they're all... Well, this one is definitely more simplistic. So... Yeah, this game is like extremely simplistic compared to the other ones. Like, this is ridiculously easy. Sly 2, like basically the, the logistics of this game is you only play a Sly except for two missions where you drive the van as Murray and one mission where you do a hacking minigame with Bentley. But pretty much everything is with Sly on the ground. And then there's just like a couple extra stuff like Sly gets a fucking jetpack or stuff like that. Yeah. Or Sly gets a submarine. <laughs> but that's the basic gist of it. When Sly 2 comes along you can play as Bentley and Murray too on the ground and stuff like that and like they have their own character related missions and be it, it, you require to beat all the missions to finish the world which is a really cool aspect of the game and then three comes along and they're like nope we're gonna add like five members to the like the three member crew <laughs> so the next thing you know you're playing with like seven different characters all right guys well it seems like we're up for this episode okay dokie so we'll see you next time on mr joystick and it'll be fucking great. Tune in more for some more anal sex. Great way to end it.